first of all, I would like to thank the invitation of being here with you and speaking, speak about policies, integrated policies, intersectoral policies. I will try to speak uh, a mixture of Portuguese and Spanish, and perhaps I will have to use the English sometimes, because some terms, perhaps I don't know how to translate them properly in the three languages. So I, I am going to use English too. I will try to do it in Portugal, Port, Portuguese and English. I mean, a combination of Portuguese and English, and I think you will understand without any problem. The question that I'm going to address during an hour uh, refers to the integration of social policies. More specifically, I will refer to six topics that are interrelated. First of all, we will refer to what do we mean by public policy integration? What is integration of social programs? There are at least five different notions of what we understand by a, mm, a social program. And second, we will refer to, if we are going to integrate, what is it that we are going to integrate? What we would like to integrate? We are going to integrate what? Uh, in the third place, to refer why do we need integration? Why is it that integration is needed? Why do we like the term integration so much? There's no, uh, uh, nobody denies integration. Everybody's in favor of integration, more or less. We are all in favor of uh, uh, doing everything uh, articulated with all the areas. And uh, the questions are the problems to achieve these. Which is the basis, uh, the conceptual basis of why we like integration so much? What are the advantages of integration? In the fourth place, there are some risks associated to, to integration. Not always integration goes smoothly. We will uh, refer to the difficulties, to the barriers, and the risks involved with integration. The fifth question is what do that we need a lot of information to make integration because for integration everybody have to know everything and they have to uh, share information uh, very specifically on the contrary uh, integration will not work properly and finally we will refer to two or three questions there are open questions. We don't know um, very well the, ans the responses or the answers. One of them is, that I may uh, tell you now, is the question uh, involving the sequencing because obviously in countries having a, a solid social policy, in Chile, Argentina, where there is a um, solid social policy, the coverage is good, Uruguay, for example, also, and the quality of the services are good also. If the, the next step would be integration. But the question, we can only speak about integration after ensuring coverage and quality or not. Do we always have to begin with integrated programs and then after that improve quality and coverage? So the question is that we have to do three things. To uh, enlarge coverage, improve the quality of the service, 
that is being offered and integrating those services. The question is, if we begin by by integration and then we broaden the coverage, we are creating a program in an integrated manner and then we work on coverage and quality or not. First of all, do we need the coverage and then we will uh, um, achieve quality and then integration. So there are different opinions how to begin with quality, for example, integration, uh, that means to say there is, uh, uh, there are a series of possibilities of what to do in the first, second, and uh, finally. Some people uh, feel that integration is the last thing to be achieved. Others think that is the first step to be achieved. So the most important thing is guaranteeing, uh, in the case of health, what is the sense of ensuring attention or servicing isolated when there are no referrals? Yes, the referrals and counter references are not established. What is the sense of having a health system which is isolated? We have to have, we need an integration from the very beginning. So this is more or less the way in which I will structure my presentation. Alessandra, somebody is going to tell me about time, yeah? Well, very quickly, what would it be to, oh, what is a an integrated policy? What is the meaning of an integrated policy? There are several concepts. One of them is the unification of similar interventions. In Brazil, uh, at the end of the last century, in the 90s, also, when we started this new cycle, we had a, a family uh, budget program. Health had its uh, own budget, which was the food budget. Education also had a specific program, school budget. Uh, there were other programs for the eradication of um, uh, child labor. So there were a series of programs involving the uh, income uh, programs for different families. Each family had three, four cards, and they received a monthly pay from different ministries. So what did uh, the federal government do? They unified all this program in just one, and that would be the unification of similar interventions, of similar programs, many times. You have multiple programs following the same purpose. So the question is to eliminate the overlapping of uh, programs and contributions. So that is integration or uh, this is the integration of social policies. This is not what we're going to refer to today. We will refer to integration of different things. Here we are speaking about the unification of similar things uh, that w mm, they have to be done uh, united, unified, never separately. That means to say today in Brazil we have a lot of uh, income programs or contributions for the elderly, for children, for the unemployed. There is uh, not a unification. France uh, took all these different programs and unified them. Mm, that is to say, people knows how much he or she are going to receive as the contributions, uh, income contributions. There are, similarly, there are a lot of 
taxes, and you may consolidate, you may unify to in just one tax. The second thing that is much the, um, my purpose today mm, is that many countries, Brazil specifically, Argentina very strongly, are, can, are federations. Mm, they, there are different states or provinces. with independent legislations. In Mexico, we also have districts or municipalities that are very, very independent. So we have uh, 5,500 municipalities, each of them with their own social policies. In some cities of Brazil, there is a transfer of income from the federal government. The poor receive this money from the government, and then also from the state governments. And finally, a transfer of money from the municipal. So there are three money transfers. Uh, there are three funds. Many activities in the area of health is decentralized to the municipal governments, but there is also a state coordination and federal coordination too. So in some cities, this may mm, you, we may have a federal hospital, a state hospital, and also a municipal hospital, a district hospital, and also a private hospital offering uh, 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 cost-free services uh, uh, according to any arrangement made by the government to serve the local population. So the coordination of similar programs is a must, which are offered at different levels, state, municipal, federal level. If, if here in Rio de Janeiro, a poor family has two cuts in order to receive money, one belonging to the city of Rio de Janeiro and another one from the federal government. If you leave the Rio de Janeiro and you go to the metropolitan area, you will have just one, but two transfers because you have from the government of the state and another money coming from the federal government, but two of them come with the same uh, receiving card. So, Outside Rio, there was an integration of both programs in just one can. Why both programs have different denominations? So oh, there's oh, one name for the gover federal government, another form of the state property. In uh, Rio de Janeiro, we have two, because they didn't come to an agreement to do it in the city of Rio de Janeiro. Outside Rio, it's different, as we saw. That is a coordination among or between different programs. The third thing that we will mention when we speak about integration is integration in the uh, offer of services when you want to reduce costs. Uh, Americans have that also. They call it one-stop centers. It that means it's a place, it's a center where you can have a lot of services. That means to say you are integrating, you are integrating, or you may integrate uh, physically the place, the site, which offers services from different areas. And the services are not uh, that integrated. You go to just one place, and you may obtain your documentation, you may also receive your benefits, uh, as, um, social security, for example, and so on. Here, integration is useful not only to provide an integrated attention to the person, but all, uh, especially for uh, cost-reducing purposes. That means to say, uh, these costs are reduced uh, when you offer the services in just a single place. Number four refers to the, uh, which we are interested in, when you make integration, in the services are not necessarily in the same place. Perhaps you have one service here, another one, uh, one kilometer, one kil at the distance of one kilometer, but here you ha have the reference for those services. 
once you have entered the program, joined the program here, you have access to several services that may be disseminated in, in the territory. So a person may have a child in a, in a, in a child center, leave a child there, uh, so she has access to a program of qualification for uh, getting uh, good uh, employment. So that means to say, uh, at a distance of one kilometer in another unit, she may get qualified, but because she joined the program for her child. So you come here and then you are offered qualification uh, for the promotion of gender equality uh, that ensures qualification, assistance to the child in order to also to obtain employment, a series of things that she may obtain from different sites, but they are uh, administrated in just one program, in one program, in one place, you may get other benefits in other places. Huh? She has to fill in a form, and with that, she will be within the program having access to all those benefits. This is the kind of integration we are going to refer to today. The other thing, uh, is integration throughout time. It is very important to, uh, to know that if you are going to the physician and you have a consultation, and the next time you come again, you have to fill in all the form again. The person doesn't know you because it's another uh, doctor, it's another, there's no integration throughout time. The, the uh, family doctor, family doctors continue always the same throughout time. So integration has, uh, uh, there are several services offered to the person, ensuring that they receive an integrated service throughout time the person that provides attention uh, to, that receives the attention is this, uh, knows the development and the problems that may appear. So it's always the same person serving the citizen is, um, throughout time, uh, throughout life cycle in some cases. Among the members, the social integration when we refer to the school for the children, there is a kind of integration that you are integrating the services uh, for just one person in a family. So this can also be combined with a place for children, uh, to leave the children, uh, and also for the elderly, for the parents of the woman to spend the day, and uh, the qualification. So many times the services and benefits are offered to the family and the services are integrated. So uh, it is not interesting to qualify a woman if she doesn't know where to leave her parents while she is working. So uh, in case they are uh, elderly people or if they have a very young child that cannot be alone. So in order to allow this woman to work, other situations in her life have to be resolved, uh, resolved at the same time. Uh, also, uh, for example, a person that in family agriculture, if they have credited, it is not interesting if that person doesn't have technical assistance and will not achieve productivity to pay the credit or the loan uh, they were granted. So there are complementary services that have to be othered, uh, offered. And many times integration has to be done not in the same person. 
the person is receiving a loan, but the family of that person are receiving a set of services, a collection of services that provide integration. The same happens with community. In many cases, in a community, a person even offering that person a package of services, the person when she or he are isolated will not uh, leave poverty behind. There is, there, are a series, some, there is a series of actions that are needed in order to have access to services. And all the community must also ha have access to a certain service. So we need integration within the community also. That is the integration of services. These are the five different types of integration. One, some of them are unification and coordination. And the, the third one refers to uh, exploring the advantages of uh, sharing, uh, sharing costs. And these two, from f number four and five, uh, and the synergies that we have in the benefits. In these two cases, you have integration. You do integration. You integrate because the sum of the parts is uh, higher than the impact of each one of the services involved. Well, what is it that we would like to integrate? First of all, We would like to integrate <laughs> the name, the name of the program, ensuring that the actions that we are carrying out has just one denomination. This is important for mm, so that the person, because it's very difficult for a person to uh, say, I am the beneficiary of 14 programs for this one, and that one, and the other one, and so on. So for a pregnant woman in Brazil, in Brazil we have a program, for example, that Brazil, we have a program which is called Rede Segunha, Stork Network, that guarantees benefits also for women that are pregnant with well, one is the transfer to the hospital for for delivery, then is the prenatal care and all of this. Each one of these has a different name, and the people get confused on all of this. So we want to uh, provide services with a common goal. This should all be called by the same name. The other thing which is also very important that we want to do is integration with, if we have 14 types of services, we don't want the person to have to go or to, to stay to be waiting in 14 lines to get that service. We want this person to go to just one single place. It might be several places perhaps, but Every time the person once goes to one of these places, she will fill out a record and she will be entered into the program. She's within the program and she is included in every single component of the program. We want to, to unify, uh, we want to have a unification process. Uh, it doesn't mean that we want everybody to go to the same place. The physical uh, the facilities can be different, but you can have a program a health program mixed together with education where the door of entry could be in the school or in the hospital. But the entry process into the process, the program, be it in the school or in the hospital, will be exactly the same. So there might be a program in order to ensure sexual and reproductive rights of teenagers the door of entry could be at the school, the door of entry could be 
in the hospital because there are adolescents that are not in school. There are others who prefer to enter into program through the school or through the hospital, and you can have them both ways. It's just one single computer. One is he's actually, he, the person is entered into the program. He'll be accessed easily. You want to have a single process of entry into the program. And it just was in a record. It just was in a file, one file only for per person. Obviously, this generates a big problem in terms of protecting individuality, in terms of protecting privacy of individuals. But in terms of health, people have been working with this type of idea for a long time. It doesn't make sense for a woman who has been victim of uh, domestic violence to have many files to fill out when it goes to, and he has to start all over again. And when it goes to the police, he has to start all over again and tell the whole story of what happened, uh, to what happened all over again a thousand times. Th there has to be just one single file that obviously has to be very well designed. Actually, the, f the uh, part of these fields are all to be looked at by the doctors and all the fields will be looked at by the social workers. This is how we can uh, protect the person. And uh, with are not three people uh, with the same name. It's just one single person, just one single file with access to information with just one single problem. Well, the other thing is we have to define a set of services that are going to be supplied. So you need to have kind of uh, a booklet. Um, well, you have service one, this service two, service three. This is the portfolio of services that are all integrated. You have entered this program, you have access to all these services that inc are included in this package. You need to, to have all, you have to have a good definition of reference and counter references, in which cases you send or what the person of service A is going to be sent to service B, in which cases services A would give continue to, continue to, to follow what happens with a person that goes to service B. So you need to have uh, services which basically are services. The person can go to different services. The information on the individual can go to different parts, to different areas. You need to have, uh, you have to unify the, uh, the calendar of events. These programs have a series of activities as vaccines, uh, laboratory tests, and then the people are going to be receiving those services. In this facility, is to have a unified calendar of everything. Also, as well, to know the health calendar, they have to go to the hospital or about to learn about social science calendar. I have to go to another place to learn about the calendar on education. I still have to go to yet another another facility. It has to be just one single unified cal calendar together with all the types of services provided. The other thing is that you have to, you have to consolidate monitoring procedures. You have to monitor people, and you have to see the development of each one of the persons. You need to have a system to do the monitoring of each one of the individuals, and you need to have a system in order to monitor services proper. So you have to start working, uh, doing integration. All these monitoring systems, as you can see here, uh, there is no integration of of caring for a person if you do not integrate just only services 
but we need to have integration of information services at the same time. There's no integration in terms of care if we, do, if we lack unification of the information system. The information system then have to be all integrated. And finally, we have to unify governance or the governance aspect of the program. Many times, this is the hardest thing to do. So if we have a program that, that uh, includes labor market, health, education, social work, the thing is, which of the secretariats or which of the ministries will be the, the, the controller of the program? You can have a shared management, but at the end of the day, one person will have to be in charge for the program. This is one of the toughest things to do. Be because the program is good, yes, the program is good. Everybody wants to head the program, or the program is very hard, and nobody wants to get concerned with it. It's hard to find someone. Why do we need integration? Why is it that we want to do these eight things that we have just discussed? Well, the first thing is that what we discussed before is that there are synergies. The impact integration is very important when if we want to increase impact of, uh, of an action, three, I can do three things. One, I can ensure access to that action to a larger number of people. Are we going to be having a greater impact? Because an action reduces poverty. If this action should reach more people, I will ha have actually a bigger reduction of poverty rates. The other thing is I can improve the quality of actions, and with this I can improve their impact too. So I can improve the design, the quality of the initiative isolatedly and improve its impact. The third thing is that I can maintain the same people, keep coverage, keep quality, but perhaps there must be something else that can be done with people in order to increase impact of this program. So to say if I have a program to provide care for people so they can get a job, I give information where they can go to find a job, what type of jobs are available, the people will tell me, yes, okay, I know that you are telling me that there is a job for me. I know that there is a job, a job available, but the, the, the boss tells me to do something I, I'm not trained for. How can I increase the impact of the program in order to do this brokerage? How can I broker this, actually, these situations? I can qualify people that also the improving quality of my information system to take telling people where their jobs are, there's a limit for this purpose. The second step is that I'm going to arrange this. I'm going to match this uh, with a training program. The existence of a training program increases the positive impact of the program of having information, actually the, of having information of where jobs are available. I guess that there's a lot of jobs. Then you have to get, be qualified in order to take, uh, you know, take, take this opportunity and get the job, land the job. This is, these are the synergies and they're very important. The second thing is, is that many times, Oftentimes,
this was very important, for example, in, um, in providing care for children. In certain communities in Brazil, there are a lot of programs providing care for children programs from the federal government, uh, from the provincial government, from the local government, programs for many NGOs, and some mothers come to you and tell you, I don't do, not, do not understand the, the, the children's social policy for so the children's social policy in my municipality because I discover new things every day and I would like to know what is best, the best care that I can give to my child? But then a person from the government has to sit down, has to do to read everything and coordinate everything. All all this information has to tell the mothers. Now you can your child can is entitled to all of these things. And and this is how it's being done. It's very important to have integration in order to ensure that people will be we have knowledge of the available services. And also, these people can be giving technical assistance, coaching, ensuring risk necessary resources, per perhaps they might need transportation, perhaps they need food to be able to take, uh, take advantage of the services is very important also to have integration. I told you again, this is very important so that people may better learn about services that they're entitled to. In general, we, if there's lack of integration, each person can do, must do the integration in their minds instead of us doing integration once and for all for them, which is more practical and more efficient. Also, we, the, another advantage will be of cost shedding, uh, of exploring the economies of scale and also unify the selection processes. Once the the boss, the head of a municipality, I catch up, it was the mayor, the mayor, the mayor of a municipality, a Brazilian mayor told me that he was talking to the poor families. He was very happy because he was offering the poor families actually 17 programs. But he told me they was talking to a poor family, the poor family told him back, told the mayor, look mayor, I only have 13 children, I cannot be in 17 lines at the same time. I only have 13 children. The thing is, each program is actually a different waiting line. I cannot actually wait in every single line. It is very important also having a a, prog a unified triage or selection program where you're going to be having, uh, you can collect information from people, actually in depth, in detail, and you, and you can do this well, and you're going to do it just one single time, not 14 times or 17 times. So generally, it is said that many resources are dedicated to, to selecting the beneficiaries, obviously, we have several selection systems. This will in have a, a high cost. The selection system is just one. Wo just one with the selection system will have the all information necessary. So that's why many countries, many countries have centralized and produced just one single selection system of beneficiaries in order to reduce costs. Finally, also what is very important, and also. In terms of uh, early childhood, this is very obvious. If you have a program, which is programs that are very seg segmented or fragmented, 
for the population and for those who aren't defending this topic, everything seems very complex and too technical. So there, there are many pro programs for maternal health. Maternal health is not just one single thing, thing but it will be in, in, in 10 different compartments. A vaccine will be one thing. The other vaccine will be another thing. Those who are going to be do advocacy, they don't have to do advocacy of one thing. They have to do advocacy of many things. And they are kind of lost. For example, in terms of early childhood, people bring also gather everything said thing. This is just one single thing, which is care for early childhood. Let's read, let's say that uh, early childhood care is very important. We have to dedicate efforts and, and make sure that the mayor, that the governor of this province will ensure and budget the item so that we can provide good care for early childhood. If we collect everything under just one single name, is it will be easier to have the support by the community and mobilization of the population. Then, if we have a lot of things scattered all, all around, for example, the fight against HIV, AIDS, there was a big progress where people said, no, we have a prevention program, we have a pr program for uh, for treatment, we have a program of this and that. But people say we have a program to control HIV AIDS. Yeah. yeah, but it is very important for the advocacy to have everything integrated. Well, integration has some risks that are important, which have to call the attention. Integration complicates everything. It is easier to have an isolated program than having an integrated program. That is to say, for example, I was looking at having a look at the case uh, involving the new intention of the school also in providing people social and emotional abilities. I was having a look, as I said, the evaluations, the assessments of programs that provide children social and emotional abilities. And you can do this just within, I mean, in class with the teachers, and or you may transform or modify the environment at school so that all the school becomes a social and emotional environment, which is more favorable for children. And the evidence that exists is that, in principle, it's better to have a program that is uh, uh, that covers all the activities at school. It is more difficult to achieve this. And in fact, the programs that focus the attention of the teachers are more efficient, not for the uh, design of the program, but for the implementation. The question that, in theory, in principle, all the things integrated didn't have any impact because uh, 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 you may take good advantage of all the synergies. But if things are done well, you put your attention on integration, but little attention on the quality of each one of the components. And in this case, you may lose more than you win because you are involving a lot of effort 
and to integration are we not provide attention to each one of the single components that are making that integration so one of the risks of integration is to concentrate uh, the efforts in integration itself and you provide all your attention to integration but you don't care for each one of the components uh, individually that means to say integration in this case becomes more complex and more challenging the other question involves that with integration you don't know very well uh, about the question on accountability and incentives and um, you depend on cooperation so if something doesn't work well it is far more difficult in an interconnected world to know who didn't uh, work well or who didn't do the things correctly you have to have certain maturity and a level of cooperation uh, sufficient enough to interconnect because if you disconnect, if you do not interconnect, some players that had their results in a very visible manner, after you make all the connections, that they may become invisible, and therefore incentives may reduce. Uh, and that will challenge performance, or a good performance. So when you integrate everything, uh, perhaps the result is not perfect. And you may know in this case who is impacting the system through a problem or a failure in the performance of the program. Uh, so if you integrate everything, it is more difficult to have a control on uh, one one of the advantages of integrated is that you don't need to have to control in each one of the uh, elements separately. And the other question the other question is ensuring ensuring that integration doesn't mean that we are going to uh, provide, because typically integration means a package of things. People are different, they have different needs, and they uh, respond to similar treatments in a very different manner. So the question is, in a program, in an integrated program, ensuring individuality to people uh, is important. Uh, also providing people with customized, uh, customized services and adequate services uh, to the needs of the people. So uh, a poor person and a person that is not that poor may need different types of uh, benefits. This means that each person, especially in an integrated service, has to have a, pl a development plan and a customized attention plan. So you are going to do all the integration and, and the steps in each service will be individualized, customized. So if you have a program for qualification and a program for information on jobs available, you, uh, you uh, perhaps one person doesn't need qualification and the other person needs uh, 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 coaching how to um, apply for a job and so on. The other person may know how to apply uh, for a job, but perhaps doesn't have the qualification. So you have to adapt. When you do integration, you cannot be strictly the same for all. A package may not serve to every single component of the group. So it has to be changed according to the needs of each one. The other question that we were mentioning before, uh, who is in command? Integration involves governance questions. 
some people have to, when, you, when we do integration, when we integrate, uh, and Bolivar knew uh, a lot of this when he, when he tried to integrate the Americas, Latin America, he saw that uh, this is not what the generals wanted. Each one of them wanted a country for themselves. So the same happens with the social programs. So integration means that there's going to be just one boss and not 10. So many times this is not uh, feasible. It is not well received. It's always a threat to integration. The other question is the indisabilities in pose limits to find targeting. When? If you have a lot of programs, a bunch of programs, and these programs lack coverage, uh, each one of them lacks complete coverage, what we can do in this case is to provide some type of programs to a group of people, others to another uh, group of people, so uh, you may say, I, have ac ac I had access to that program, and you may share with people the programs available. When, let me to say, you may say that if you have, for example, the best solution for a certain program in the area of income uh, distribution, uh, in order to cover all the poor population, it's better to cover all the poor population, giving each one of them a small amount that mm, provided a, a large amount to just a few. It is very, uh, the impact on poverty will be uh, higher if you uh, distribute a little to all than if you concentrate the distribution of money among just a few. For example, these programs, uh, eight programs, Bolsa Familia, family budgets and so on, they do a, a relatively small uh, payment to a lot of people. But what happens when you integrate? When you integrate, you have a lot of programs, and put them all together, and we have, as a result, a larger program. And that larger program, we say, who has access to the program will have access to all these things. Therefore, integration generates indivisibility, generates a large benefit. If you are lucky enough to join this program, you will have a coverage in a lot of areas. If integration is group, the program will cover uh, the diversified areas. But what happens if that program is expensive and the country doesn't have the resources necessary, you will not be able to ensure or guarantee such a large integrated package to all the people. So the question of integration is that you say, no, I have all these programs, this NGO does this, the other one does that. So the, gov the go local government does this. If you put all these together in just one a single program, the question is that uh, NGO A provided attention or served fa families one, two, three. Uh, NGO B served families uh, five, six, and seven, five, six, and seven. If you put all them together in just one, that program one wa will be able to serve families one, two, or three, or four, five, or six. It's good because they don't have uh, an organi social organization providing the program to program the attention to a series of families and another uh, in giving uh, services to other group of people. I in terms of impact, it's good to have just one program, but in terms of coverage, it may be more limited. 
So we have to have a lot of money to have an integrated and qualified program for all. The lack of integration is a strategy to increase coverage, apparent coverage, because apparently we are covering everything. Um, but the idea is to give everything that one needs and share the programs. So when we have integration, we have that question to see. Well, I was speaking to a major and he said, major and he said, I don't understand this program you are mentioning because today I have 10 programs. But it's the same. I, uh, um, the population goes to a queue, uh, small queues. And what you are doing is putting all together in just one program and I have to give the 10 things for the same person and they have to, to go to the same place. So you will need a, a longer queue and just one tenth of the people will be benefited. So everybody will be unhappy. So uh, I, I'm not going to be elected again. The question of integration mm, that we have uh, to bear in mind is that uh, the lack of resources means indivisibility. We are saying, look, what we should do was, sh should have done was this, but we are not capable of doing uh, that. So <laughs> this integration is a way of becoming this thing a little clear. Integration makes it more visible on the country. We need information requirements to integrate. We need uh, pool of services which services must be available. We also need which are the services. We need the location and characteristics of local providers. We need, a cr we need criteria for access. Who is going to have access? A reference and counter-reference system. We also need to know the number of beneficiaries, their profile and their needs the rules of priority or priority rules. We also need to know who are the beneficiaries that don't serve the services that are being provided because we also have to go to the houses of the people that are not uh, attending the services. We have to search, and uh, we have to carry out an active search of people. Well, what are the questions that we don't uh, know very much about? First of all, which effective impact has integration? If you read the literature on impact evaluation or assessment, you will see that in general, we assess the impact of each component. There are just a few studies showing that the impact of two, uh, two components together is higher than the sum of the uh, separated components. So the uh, material on impact of integration, we are speaking about integration uh, as something that will have a lot of virtues enlarging the uh, efficiency of social programs. But the empiric and solid evaluation of impact, uh, which, uh, which are careful with integration, are just a few. So we don't have, in order to advocate, we can have a state of 100 words. Integration has improved the impact of the action, we have to work more on that. The other question that I was mentioning when we began was the question involving sequencing. We have to do three things in each community. Increase coverage, improve the quality, and promote integration. The question is, in which order do we carry out this? Therefore, 
I have been working uh, quite a long time on the uh, serving uh, very uh, small children in the border in Brazil and Venezuela, in Roraima, in the capital of the state of Roraima, in Boavista, the major uh, things, that, mm, the most important thing is integration. So he started an integration of attention to very small children, uh, completely integrated. He goes to the children that attend the program, that go to the program, have access to everything. The idea is to start with integration. If you go to, for example, a program that exists in the poor area, in the northeast of Brazil, they have a program called uh, uh, New Seeds, which are the children, little children, and this program is to ensure coverage, immediate coverage for all with a quality, with a basic quality program. I don't know to know about integration. I want all the children having access to a nursery or to a, a kindergarten, and then we will increase quality. And if you go to uh, Campinas, which is a, uh, um, uh, in Sao Paulo, a city in Paulo, they have a, a nursery school or a kindergarten which very in very good condition, similar to the base ones in Italy, where there are some which are very good for the development of children. The, uh, that develops children on the basis of perception, artistic perceptions and questions, but the coverage is very little and they don't have integration. So the idea that we have to have the children that are going to be served, that they have to receive very good care, these little children. In Juazeiro, in the north uh, of Brazil, we have to guarantee to all the children just a minimum attention in Boa Vista, each one, each child we are going to serve must have a complete package. So we haven't come to an agreement on the sequencing, at which moment of the sequence, uh, how to use integration, is it at the beginning or uh, at the end? That means to say, just to end up, uh, I have prepared a small diagram that shows how to design an integrated program. So this is a summary of everything that we have commented. First, define, if you want to do something integrated, which are the services to integrate, that are being integrated? Second, which type of governance this program will have? How? is going to be, uh, what is going to be the beginning of the program, uh, agenda of events of the program. Five, defining uh, um, registry, uh, uh, unified for all the people in the program. And also define procedures, uh, screening procedures and selection procedures how these uh, individual development plans are going to be conducted, what about the reference systems and counter-reference system, how is it that we are going to uh, do it, take into consideration the individual development plan, how are we going to conduct the attention program, the services involved, how the people is developed, which type of attention they are going to receive individually, what about the monitoring of the service and what about the monitoring of the provision or supply of services? And this, uh, there is a diagram for its implementation. This for the design and this is kind of in for the implementation of the program and here we have actually, we see the different similar steps you have to discuss with the stakeholders of the different programs and tell them that integration of services is needed. You have to join different secretaries and ministries 
do you have a, a general agreement for integration? You have to establish governance, and there is a, the need of having an inventory of the local supply of services. There has to be an event calendar. There has to be the design of the port of entry, of the door of entry to the program. Individual files have to be defined. The screening systems have to be defined. And also, the priorities have to be set. What is going to be urgent or not so much urgent? There has to be a reference and counter-reference system. The monitoring system of people. And there has to be a search, a search program, a search pro active search program of people that are not engaged in the program. The people who come to the program and also have to search out so to make sure that everybody can is included in the program. So we have to have an active search. We have to monitor supply of services and ensure services to be be to be to ensure services offered and with good quality. This is a summary of the of the design, design of the program and implementation of it. <laughs>